Hey all, Lawrence from Express Unity, and today we're going to be looking into some post-processing and editing the values inside of our code. Um, this is a video that I did do around about a year ago. Uh, actually, I think it just hit a year just the other day, yeah, a year. Um, and basically, it's changed a lot since then. Um, we kind of had to do it a kind of a hacky way to get it working uh, back then as unity didn't properly implement it And you had to download the github and all that stuff um, But now it's kind of fully integrated into unity and you don't need to go through that hassle um, a user in our discord server brought to my attention that the old video does not work with the uh, universal render pipeline and so that is what we are going to do today. I literally just spent the last hour or so just taking a look at uh, at how it's how how you do it now, and I'm just going to share this knowledge on the, out to to you guys so that uh, you don't need to search as hard as myself and the Discord user <laughs> uh, searched uh, and g gave us a lot of headaches searching the the Unity forums. Um. So, all I've got here is a, just the standard universal uh, project opened up in the sample scene. We've already got a post-processing volume. Um, oh, and before I go on, I do want to apologize for the lack of Photon and Playfab tutorials. Unfortunately, because of the whole pandemic situation, I haven't really been at my studio lately. So, this current video is being recorded at my home, and I currently don't have any of my equipment here. Um, that I got for my studio, so all my mic and all that is different. So apologies if it sounds bad. Maybe it sounds better. I'm kind of using a um, a, a road mic that I use for recording instruments and stuff. I've never really used it to record um, my tutorials. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, the first thing we want to do is create a script and we might call this one post processing manager and i'm just going to drag this onto the post process volume game object that uh comes uh pre-made in the demo scene or sample scene rather and we want to be using unity engine dot rendering and using unity engine dot rendering dot universal now what we want is to reference that volume script so this script here uh fairly simple now compared to what we used to have to do all we say is public volume and we'll call it volume now you can do get component volume and 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 all that fancy stuff but because i plan to kind of move this script around on other game objects from time to time i'm just going to make it a public so that i can just go into unity here and drag that volume script into there all right so it is a little bit different on how to set values now compared to how it was before but it's still relatively simple um so we want to create a new bloom um you bloom uh, reference up here uh, for our value so we'll just call this bloom and we'll just say something like if uh, volume dot profile um, try get we know we want to try and get our bloom component and then if we get that bloom component then we go down and set our values whatever so we want to out into our bloom so then inside of this, if if we do have a bloom component, we can then say something like bloom dot intensity dot value. And just so that we know it's working, let's set this value to 100. So now once the scene runs, everything should be really, really bright. And there it is. It is nice bloom effect. Alrighty. So what if we want to do something real time? Now, I'm not sure what it is with the sample scene, but for some reason, the update function is being a, a little bit strange with the post-processing. 
uh, but I found it works fine with fixed update. So I'm going to be running all this code in fixed update. Maybe it's just my installation of Unity. Yours might be fine in update. I would recommend running it in update over fixed update. But um, yeah, for some reason, my update is doing some weird stuff with it. So I'm just going to run it in fixed update. Um, now, what we want to do instead of having this Bloom component in start is moving that up so that it is now global throughout the script. We no longer want to set our value here. And what we can do instead is say, uh, maybe we want to give it some sort of pulsing effect, right? So we can say bloom dot, uh, dot intensity dot value. And we want to equal this to math F dot ping pong. And we'll say time dot time. And maybe with, um, maybe eight would be a good value. Uh, and we might times time by two so that it speeds up the pulse a little bit. Alrighty, so just leave it open here so that you can see, actually you probably won't be able to see the value change because of that bug I was talking about, we'll see. Okay, so it is pulsing. Getting brighter, there it is, going down, now it's getting brighter. Yeah, so this bug, for whatever reason, it's not, it doesn't, I don't know if it's something I've done, but it doesn't show the value changes real time like it usually does. I need to actually refresh the inspector UI by moving my mouse around on it. So I don't know if it's a bug with my current Unity version, which is 2019.3.1F, but uh, yeah, I need to kind of move my mouse around. And this was the same thing that was happening with the update. If I ran the code in update, it actually wouldn't run post-processing unless I would move my mouse around the Unity UI, so I, I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, so I believe if we wanted to make this run faster, we'd just times it more. So we can times it by six, and this would have a faster pulse now. There it is, and we have a faster flashing light, or faster bloom rather. Um, now we've got, uh, what other components can we change here? Um, let's just add post-processing, see what we have. Uh, chromatic abrasion, what's this one I forget, is that the blurring on the side? Yeah, okay. So let's just add that there. Let's do the same thing. Chromatic abrasion, we'll just say, uh, we'll just call it, uh, chromatic, whatever. Um, and let's do the same thing. In fact, we really don't need this if anymore because we're not really changing values in start. So we can do the same thing here, except we want to get uh, chromatic abrasion and we will call this chromatic or out into chromatic rather. And we basically just do the same thing. I'm gonna just copy this line and we will just say Chromatic dot intensity dot value. Oh, I believe this only goes to a one. Yeah, it only goes to a one. Uh, so we're just gonna make the value from zero to one there. We might just put F there just in case. And now we should get some funky flashing weird bloom and chromatic abrasion effects that is completely driven by our code. There it is, we're tripping out here. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's gonna conclude this video. Just a, just a little quick one here. Um, just a quick update on how post-processing can work inside of your scripts now to create these funky, weird effects or whatever you're trying to accomplish in your code. Um, I will try and get some Photon content out soon. Um, ideally I wanted to do that stream and whatnot at the studio, but if things are still continuing down a bad path currently in my location, then I may just move everything back home and just make it at home. But yeah, again, apologies for that. If you guys need any help, uh, with anything, post-processing, photo and play, play fab, or just any unity stuff in general, join our discord server. Myself and a few others would be more than happy to give you a hand. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.